Hello everybody, it's me again, and today we're playing some more Kerbal Space Program. I'm actually going to do a tutorial on how to build your first uh, orbital craft, your first orbit-ready rocket, and how to uh, take it into orbit. So let's begin. Uh, we're going to start off with the command pod Mark 1. This is the 3 meter 1 person command pod. Just select that. Going to put the parachute on top. And this is the only non stock part that I'm going to use is mech jab. I always use mech jab to keep track of uh, exactly what's going on. Just gonna slap him on the side. You do not need that. Just let me say that you do not need mech jab, but I like to use him. So now we're going to uh, put on this decoupler. The decoupler, uh, the TR-18A stack decoupler, is what you use to uh, switch from uh, one stage to the next stage in a vertical stack, in a stack of rockets. So I'm going to put one right here to detach everything below the command pod from the command pod. And then I'm going to uh, attach an advanced SAS module. There are two types of SAS module, advanced and standard. You only need one advanced SAS module because the advanced SAS module controls things like uh, the RCS thrusters, I'll get to those in a second, and the winglets and other physical ways that the uh, rocket is controlled. Whereas, these, whereas this uh, other normal SAS module is sort of like a gyroscope. It uh, can control things like the roll and the pitch of the rocket without needing any physical, external physical activity, such as the RCS thrusters burning or the movement of wings. And if you have, an, if you have a large rocket, you may meet, need more than one of these. The command pod itself contains a uh, small version of the normal SAS module, so you don't need to put one, an SAS module that is, on your uh, final stage here. I'm just going to put the advanced SAS module there because that has a part in controlling the RCS thrusters. This is an RCS fuel tank. Just goes right there. Now for the RCS thrusters. You want four of these. Any more or any less and your rocket will be uh, more difficult to control. You want four of them. And I always place them right on the decoupler. Then we're going to move that up. Go back over here and put on a single FLT400 fuel tank. Under that we're going to mount a single small uh, LV909 liquid fuel engine. That is your standard 1 meter orbital engine. You use this rocket and this rocket to get into the upper atmosphere and into orbit. You use these, you use this for orbital maneuvers because while it has much less thrust, it has a uh, high specific impulse in the vacuum, which means that it is very fuel efficient. This thing, uh, It'll take you longer to get where you're going in orbit with this thing. So if you're doing a, a transmuter injection or something. But it will use less fu fuel getting there. And once again, we go over here and uh, put another stack decoupler on. You can see over here with the staging, it adds a new stage every time I add a new stack decoupler. And here's where it gets fun.
First of all, we're going to put on a regular SAS module right there. Because uh, that way, when we detach this lower stage, this first stage, or actually it's going to be the second stage, but you'll see that in a second, we'll get rid of this SAS module that we don't that we won't really need anymore in the process. If we had it up here, it would just be dead weight. Down here, it'll be uh, detached and won't be weighing us down. Now, go over here. Just go ahead and switch symmetry back to 1. And we want 4 of these fuel tanks. 1, 2, 3, 4. We need to move it up. Oops, grab the parachute by accident. We need to move it up even farther. Alright. Now we take this largest uh, 3 meter engine. It has 250, It has a max thrust of 215 and a specific impulse of 320 in the atmosphere and 370 in a vacuum. The main downside is that it doesn't have thrust vectoring. But uh, that's something that we can get around. So we put that there. Now I'm going to start fooling around with the staging. I like to put uh, things like SAS module and such, the parts, into the same stage with the uh, decoupler, and fuel tanks especially. Just like that. Up here, we move that up there. That's just fine like it is. Now we're going to... Oh! Pardon me. We're going to hold down Alt and click on this top tank, and that's going to split off an identical stack. I'm just going to put that over there for now. Switch symmetry to uh, 2, and we're going to select the TT38K radial decoupler. There are two different radial decouplers, and they actually seem to share the same name. So I didn't notice that before. But this one holds the part that you're coupling out farther away from the craft. And this one holds it closer. I like the one that holds it closer for what I'm doing here. Just because uh, it keeps everything more centered, I feel, if that makes sense. Okay, we're just going to put that there. That's just fine like it is. Then we're going to take this and drag it up I'm gonna take it back and hold on hmm okay new plan we're going to scrap this uh... keep the two symmetry and we're going to build onto this and you can see how I've got it arranged uh, the axis that I have it on, that's important keep in mind what axis this is on now we're going to build uh, this just like that then we're going to grab this Make sure we have our. Uh, make sure we're on the right axis. Make sure we're straight. We're gonna move it around until it is a, just about equal here, so that all three of these boosters are equal. And then we just pop on two new of these. All right, now we're gonna put all three engines in the same stage. These eight tanks we're going to move up into this stage and these uh, four tanks can stay where they are alright that's just how I want it that's beautiful alright you're gonna see what I'm planning here in a minute this is uh... the way that this rocket works is that these two boosters drain their fuel into this center stack and then when these two run out of fuel, they uh, disconnect and fall away, fall away from the rocket. And the center stack is then free to push the rest of the 
craft uh, up into orbit. Now, for this, we're going to use the FTX2 external fuel ducts. Place How you place these is important, since the first tank that you click on is the tank that it feeds from, and the second tank that you click on is the tank that it feeds to. Notice the, uh, the arrows on the side. Alright, now we're going to mount some winglets so that we can control this thing in the atmosphere. I mount my winglets. Uh, there's the center line, so I'm going to mount my winglets. You can see it's uh, symmetrical. Just about like this. We're going to have four of them. That's not perfectly symmetrical. That's still not symmetrical. Pardon my OCD. That may not be symmetrical, but that's what I call good enough. Alright, so now we've got four fins. Those will allow us to control the rocket in the atmosphere. Now we're going to go back here and take these TT-18A launch stability enhancers. These hold the rocket above the launch pad so that it isn't balancing on its engines and they release uh, when the stage that they're in is activated. So let's pull this down a bit. That's clipping into the ground. Take it back up. That's good. All right, and they, they were put in the right spot. These will release at the same time I fire the engines. Now we're going to do something a little bit crazy. First let's save our rocket. Now we're going to calculate how much delta V the stages of this rocket have and the rocket's thrust to weight ratio. Firstly to calculate the delta V uh, this is important because delta V represents how much work your rocket can do. I'm no astrophysicist or rocket scientist or anything like that, but uh, delta V isn't that hard of a principle to understand. The, the formula for calculating it is fairly simple, but I'll be honest, I know how to read it, but I don't know how to say it. I'll put it in an annotation at the top of the screen here. But uh, it, you, the formula uses the total weight of the rocket, uh, 